This video will show you how to set up a groundwater model using GMS of the vicinity of the Clemson campus. The campus here is shown in this shaded region and you can see here is the reflection pond, Bracket Hall is right here. The streams are shown on this map as are the topographic contours and this will be information that we'll use in the groundwater model. To set up the model, what I did was draw out the traces of the streams and I put the elevations at several points along each stream. I also located three points here that we'll use to register the map in GMS. We have the coordinates here of the points. We'll have a base map that is the image that I just showed you, and we'll have another one that is this uh, image that is basically the traces of the streams without the underlying map. A third base map will be this air photo. It has the three points that we'll use for registration, uh, and it also shows a lot more detail than the previous maps. So if we go to GMS and open a new model, we can bring in these base map files. This is, the base map is stored as a JPEG file. And so here it is. The first thing that we need to do is to register this map. And so we see the three points and we have the registration points right here. So I'll make that point number one and this point is number two and point number three will be what we're calling C. So now to register it what I have to do is type in the coordinates and so I set up the coordinate system with this being uh, the zero zero location and so I just when I was in Google Maps I just measured it and this is uh, 180 meters north of that point and 100 meters to the west so point number two would be at x coordinate of minus 100 and a y coordinate of 1080 and point C would be at 1100 and 775. Okay, so it's easy to get these maps and, and find these uh, locations. And so you should be able to set up maps like this uh, yourself. And we'll import this one into our model as like so. And so while we're at it, let's import those other maps. So we need to right click and we'll take this one uh, okay so I imported it I've already used this Clemson ba base map uh, streams and so it's already been registered but when you bring it in for the first time you'll have to register it but you can see if I turn this map off this base map 1a if I turn it off then the streams are really basically we're seeing the underlying map here and they're in the same locations so we'll also bring in the uh, air photo and it comes in like that and so let's turn off so so when I imported this image I didn't get the automatic uh, window to come up that wanted me to register the image but to use it with these other images I think pretty clearly that they're not registered in the same spot so what we need to do is register this air photo so I'm going to right click and get register image and select that and then I get this window and I'll be able to 
drag, let's see, I'll make this one number one. The, the particular number doesn't really matter. We switched these around last time, but as long as we put the right points, the right coordinates for each point. So number one is this one now, and it's minus 100 plus 1080. And point number two is now 0, 0. And point number three is 1100 and 770. And hopefully, now when we enter this, we'll have this image registered on top of the others. OK, so we can test it by turning this image on. And so it looks like if we take a look at that point, if we turn it off and turn it on, it looks pretty good. OK, so now all these images are registered. And we can begin to construct the model. So the procedure will be very much like what we used with the previous uh, model. We'll go and start with a conceptual model. And let's put it, uh, let's give it a name here for clarity. We'll call it Clemson. And then we'll insert some coverages. So we'll need three coverages. Uh, like we did last time. The first one will be K. And we'll use it to specify these three uh, uh, aspects of the connectivity. We'll use another, um, we'll use five layers for this model. And this will be how we define the active area. And that's good for now. And we'll put in another coverage. And this one will be the recharge and the recharge rate. And that should be sufficient. And we need one for the streams. These, this will be uh, boundary conditions, specified head boundaries. And we'll put it, in this case, in the upper layer. hit OK. Alrighty, so now we've got to specify the regions that um, that this these different uh, co coverage correspond to. So uh, we select K, and then we're going to go to draw arc. And I think what we're going to want to do is have this region here be the model. But I'm going to have the K region be bigger than that. I think right now I'm going to turn off that air photo. So we'll make build polygons. So now we've got a polygon there that's the hydraulic connectivity. And I think I'll just go now and set up the attributes. So if I go to polygons, I'll just use the values that are uh, specified in the problem. These are reasonable values for this area. And recharge will be a similar thing. We'll draw a region here. Go to Feature Objects, Build Polygons, and then go to the Attribute table. Select the polygons and put in the recharge rate. And we'll try 0.5 e to the minus 8. And looks like we want to change the units here. So we'll go to Edit Units. We've been using consistent units all along. So this really won't change anything. But it'll just make things more clear. OK, so we've got Recharge and K specified. Now the streams. OK, so this is going to be, this is going to take a little more work than last time. Um, what I'm going to do is, actually, before we put in the streams, what I'm going to do now is put in the grid frame. OK, this is going to be the area that I'm going to write a grid onto. 
So I'm going to make sure that I'm going to put this here. I'm going to make sure that it covers the area that I want it to cover. And let's see, I'll go down to there and over to here. Okay, now the reason I'm doing this is because I'm going to start drawing the streams on here. And these, there are streams that are right over here on the edge. So I'm going to want to make sure that these polygons that I'm, or these uh, arcs that I'm going to draw for the streams stay within the region that ultimately will be the grid. And I see a little problem right here. So let's go move it like that. Okay. Alrighty. So now let's start putting in the stream boundary conditions. And we'll use the arc and we'll just draw in this long stream here. And I'm just going to use the straight line that I drew, although you could draw in the, uh, the actual trace of the stream in a little more detail. And then I'll double click here at the end. Okay, so I think that the best way to do this to keep track of what's happening is to draw that polygon in and then let's go through and set up the attributes. So if I select it and double click, I get the arc and I make a specified head arc. And then I hit, hit OK, then I'm going to go to the endpoints and I'm going to specify the head there is 225 and the head here as 185. So what happens now by default is that GMS interpolates between these two endpoints. So we'll have heads that vary linearly along the length of this stream. And that'll get us in the ballpark, but there'll be points along the stream where we know the elevation. And so we'll want to adjust those points accordingly. And that'll happen when we start to put in additional streams. So let's put in another arc. And we'll put in the stream here. And I'm going to double click here right on top of the line that I just drew. OK. And we'll go here to the select arrow. We'll select it. We'll make it a specified head boundary. And then we'll go to this node at the end. And that's, um, I think it's 225 as well. Yeah. 225. And then what's happened down here, if we can zoom in on this, when I clicked over this line, what it what GMS did was to merge these two lines together. So these two lines intersect, which is really what we want. And so what it did is it associated the end of the line that I just drew with this linear interpolation along the, the previous line. So if I double click, we'll see that it already has hydraulic head specified on it. That's the hydraulic head that's uh, done by linear interpolation. And you can see it's close, but it's not the head that's specified on the map. So we'll change it to that head. And so now what happens is this stream varies linearly from 225 to 193. And this, this stream here varies from 185 linearly to 193, and then from 193 up to 225. Okay, so that's how the, the program accommodates these changes. And we can put in the rest of these streams. Maybe we would want to go and follow this stream along its true course. That would be fine. And now we'll put in the endpoints. We might also want to put in this little pond up there. We could do that. Hmm. Okay, first of all, we have to go to arcs and we have to make it a specified head boundary. So before we can specify what the head is, we have to tell it that it's that kind of feature. So we give it 225 and this we will give 205. It was pretty close already. 
Okay, so put the rest of these in. And I'll right click on the arc first, make it specified head, and then I'll click on the node and make this one 215. This one is 204. Really close. Hit OK. OK, so we've got those streams in, and we have some more up here. Um, what I'm going to do is represent this. This is the edge of the lake. And what I'll do is put that lake in as just a constant head boundary that goes along like this. Uh, it'll all be the same head, 198. Uh, we could go and fill this area in, uh, but because it's right on the edge of the map, it, it really won't, it won't matter. So I'm just going to do it a, a, in a simple way and just draw the line in. Uh, and let's see, the rest of these are all pretty straightforward. So I'm going to pause and then just draw these in. Okay, so I've drawn in these uh, boundaries, these stream boundaries. It looks like there could be a couple more we could do up here. We could do this one. We might put some others in here, but they really won't matter much, so we'll just uh, keep it the way it is. And so I think uh, we're in pretty good shape. Uh, this is the conceptual model that we'll go with. And so the next step will be to create a grid. So we'll go over here to grid frame. We've already placed the grid. And the important thing at this point is that all of the boundary conditions that we've drawn, all of these arcs, are within the purple boundary. And these other uh, regions, these other polygons here that we've used for recharging K are uh, outside. Basically, this grid is encompassed within it. So we can go and do map to 3D grid. And what we'll do in this case is we'll make a 100 by 100 grid. And we'll just set these defaults. And we'll make the, the thickness of the grid 50 meters. And we'll have five cells. And we'll make the the bottom of the grid at 130 meters. The top of it will be then at 180 meters. And what's going to happen then is the grid, this is the lowest boundary right here at 185. So the, all of these boundary conditions will be above the grid that we're going to set. So our grid won't actually show, won't actually include the water table. The water table will be above our grid. But that'll be OK. There, there really won't be too much um, of an error by assuming that at this point. We can, we can change that down the road. But this is going to be a simpler setup. So we'll go with this for now. Um, so set it up like that, and then hit OK. And it'll generate the grid. And so that looks pretty good. We can look at it in cross-section. There it is in cross-section. And we might want to um, go and do this vertical exaggeration with the Z magnification. So there it is. And we look at it in perspective view. We see this 3D grid now located up with the map here that we've drawn um, at uh, elevation of 0. OK, so I think think that we should be in pretty good shape. Let's go and do, well, actually, no. We haven't put in a mod flow simulation. So we've got to do that. So go to grid, new mod flow. And the starting heads will be the top of the grid. So we'll use 180 uh, for everything. And the top and the bottom elevations we'll just keep uh, as their default values. And so now we should be in pretty good shape to check and see how things look. OK. 
Okay, so, oh. Okay, horizontal hydraulic conductivity values are zero. So what this, the reason for this is that I haven't mapped it yet. So we've got to map all this stuff that we've done here to our modflow files. And there we see the stream boundaries. So we did the mapping and now we can check it. And great, everything looks good. So let's go ahead and run it. And yes, I do, but I think I'm going to have to give it a new name. So I'll be, I've been calling it Clemson V1. Okay. Well. Let's see. I'm not quite sure what. Well, okay. This looks fine. All right. So we, it ran. You can see this clutter, this graphic clutter. So we're going to go here to display options and clean that up. We'll turn off the cells. And if we go to mod flow here and check the mark flooded cells, those are the blue triangles. And we turn those off. And I think that it looks a little bit better if we use, uh, let's see, cancel. We go to contours and use the color fill. And OK, well, so this is, this is our result here. Um, I think we look at this in plan view. There's the results. And so we have um, gaining streams. You can see how the contours go. So they're all gaining streams. That looks right. That, that's what we expect in this area. The hydraulic heads here are about 220, 230. And the ground surface here is about 240, 250 meters. So that's about right. Have the water table. 10, 20 meters down. So this looks really um, quite reasonable. Let's see how it looks with the base maps. Um, I think the best way to do that is to make the map a little transparent. So we start to see the base map showing through. Looks like we want to have it a little more transparent than that. So, OK, we see that the groundwater high is right up here, right around the reflection pond and bracket. And then it drops off uh, much, much as topography does. OK, so that's uh, pretty good. That's our first attempt at determining the hydraulic heads in the vicinity of Clemson. And for the exercise, what we want to do is is do the path lines or the flow paths from several locations. And so to do that, we have to turn on the mod path program. And so we go here to project and model interfaces, and we'll turn the mod path program on there. And now it shows up uh, here in the menu. And we'll put on a few points. And let's first go and put some points in at Bracket Hall. So I think the, what we'll do is just turn this output off altogether. And I turned on the map tools. And so let's see. If we zoom in, I'm going to put some points. And so there's Bowman Field. And there's Bracket Hall right there. OK, so I'm going to put some points in there and see. So actually, you know, before I do this, what, where do you think it's going to go? I'm going to put in a, quite a few points around here. So um, we probably should have put in a pool and uh, see who could predict where the, a plume from Bracket Hall might go. But um, maybe next time. So we put in those points, and we'll select them. 
select intersecting objects and go to mod path generate the particles the same way we've been doing it and we go and turn this back on and we should have some particles okay so there we go um, now I think we want to um, well, let's see. It's kind of hard to see these guys. Maybe I can change the, let's see, go to display.